right hand clap, left hand clap. Ah, oh, great! I knew this was going to be a bad idea. Why? As soon as you said handshake, I should have known. I don't have any hands, Katie. We're going to have to do a wing shake instead. But I don't have any wings. What? You don't have any wings? Coco, do I look like a bird to you? Hmm, not really. I suppose, but you never know. Well, I do know. And I know that I'm not a bird, which means I don't have any wings, which means I can't do a wing shake. Yeah, I love one actually, thanks. What? A milkshake. I'll have a chocolate flavour. Coco, I didn't say milkshake, I said wing shake. Yeah, Katie, that's me. My wings are precious. Don't joke about that, you can't put my wings in a shake. <sighs> I don't mean wing shake as in milkshake, I mean wing shake at... Oh, never mind. Let's just do the hand and wing shake and get it over and done with and then we can go tell a story, okay? Yeah, I hear milkshake and I'm in, Kate. Good. All right, ready? Always. Right clap, left clap, jump, double clap, and head tap. Yeah. Yes, finally. Go, go, amazing. Now let's go. Let's Get go and tell a story. Milkshake. What? what? Story then milkshake. All right. Let's shake things up a bit, shall we? Ah, let's see what you did there. Thanks, Coco. Are we going to shake things up, though? Are we going to shake up? How can you shake a story anyway? Unless you have an actual storybook, I suppose, which you could hold a shake and handshake, but still, why would you even do that? The story is still going to stay the same, right? Even if you... Coco, if you don't stop talking, you're going to be the next thing to be shaken up. Got it? Good. When I said shake things up, I was talking about the story, but I didn't mean I was literally going to shake the story up like a milkshake like you were going on about. I meant that the story of my friend St. Margaret Clitheroe took place in a pretty shaken up world. The world was shaken up. Wait, does that mean there was an earthquake? No, Coco, not an earthquake. You're taking me too literally again. I don't mean the actual world is in the ground itself. I mean what was going on in the world. Ah, oh, right. So are things not going normal then? Now you're on the right track. Margaret lived in England almost 500 years ago. During that time, not only England, but most of Europe were going through some crazy times. What was happening? For more than a thousand years, Christians had been, for the most part, all joined together, sharing the same beliefs and practices of the Catholic faith. But a few decades before Margaret lived, some Christians started to break away and begin their own churches, each believing that their beliefs were right and everyone else was wrong. The Church of England was one of these Christian churches which broke away from the Catholic Church. And before long, a law was made in England that no one was allowed to be Catholic. Instead, they all had to join the new Church of England. What if they didn't want to? They were forced to. To be a Catholic was a crime punishable by death. By death? Oh no! I can already see where this is going! Did Margaret end up getting killed because she was a Catholic? Yes, but she hadn't always been Catholic. The Church of England had already been out around long enough by the time she was born that she grew up in a family who followed the new faith. It wasn't until after she got married that she eventually discovered the truth of the Catholic Church 
and converted despite the obvious danger of doing so. What about a husband? Did he become a Catholic as well? No, but his brother was a Catholic priest and Margaret provided him and lots of other priests with places to stay, even in her own house. Why couldn't they stay in their own houses? Because they had to hide. It was already bad to be a Catholic, but to be a priest was even worse. And they were especially hunted down by the government and captured. Ah, so Margaret was keeping them safe from being arrested? That's right. And the priests would say mass in her homes where other Catholics would also come in secret as they weren't allowed to celebrate mass in the churches anymore. That must have been tough. So every time they wanted to go to mass, they had to do it secretly? Every time. Because they were afraid of getting captured? It wasn't so much they were afraid of getting captured. They all knew they could get captured any day. But they kept meeting together in secret because it was so important to them. And Margaret knew that the priests had to be protected as much as possible. Because without the priests, they could have no mass or any of the other sacraments. So they wouldn't be able to receive Jesus? Nope. Or have their sins been given in confession? Nope. Or get blessed when they were really sick or dying? Nope. Or get baptized or married as a Catholic or become a priest? Nope. Wow! I see why Margaret kept the priest safe then. It really goes to show how lucky we are that we can go to Mass and practice our faith so freely today. Imagine if every time we went to Mass, we were putting ourselves and others in danger of being arrested or even killed. Margaret must have been so brave! Did any of the priests she kept in ever get captured? Yes, many of them did. It was sad for Margaret and the other Catholics because that meant there was one less priest who could minister to them. But for those brave priests, it was an opportunity to give their lives to God and die for Him. Do you think Margaret was ever afraid that she might get killed as well? She knew what could happen any day, but she wasn't afraid. Instead, the brave examples of the priests and other Catholics who were killed almost every day for their faith inspired Margaret. Sometimes she would even go at night to the place of execution to pray that she might have the honour of a martyr's death as well. A martyr's death? You mean to die for Jesus? Exactly. And you said she actually wanted and even prayed for it. Is she coconuts? She wanted to give everything for love of Jesus, her life and her death. He had given his life for her, so she wanted to give no less in return. She loved him, especially as she knew him in the Catholic Church. Wow, our prayer was eventually answered, wasn't it? It was. After sending her oldest son to France to be trained as a priest, her house was searched and she was arrested with the charge of hiding priests and holding masses in her home. But when she was asked if she wanted to try to prove if she was innocent or not, she refused. The only people who could be asked to prove that was her own young children and her servants, and she didn't want any of them involved in the cause of her death. If one of your parents had been arrested for going to Mass, you wouldn't be the one to be, say that they had and then send them to their deaths either, would you? Margaret had prepared herself for death and the glory that waited her afterwards, but she still didn't want her kids to feel that they were responsible for having her killed. Her kids still must have been so, so sad that they were losing their mum now. And that was probably the hardest thing for Margaret as well to leave her children without a mother. But when she was arrested, she had no choice. It was either give up her Catholic faith and return to the new faith of the Church of England, which she would never do, or die. I bet people still try to persuade her to give up her faith though. They would have thought she was coconut. Margaret, think of your family. Don't throw away your life for nothing. Spare yourself for them. No, no, Sheriff. I die for love of my Lord Jesus. Jesus must have been so happy to be loved and liked by him. Extremely happy, Coco. And do you know what made it even more special? What? 
Margaret gave her life to Jesus on Good Friday, the same day Jesus gave his life for her and all of us when he died on the cross. He would have carried her straight to heaven in his own arms. That's amazing! And he would have taken an extra good care of her kids too, wouldn't he? Now, they just had Mary to be their mother. Yes, and Margaret trusted that they would be taken good care of by God and his mother. The last thing she could give them was her own prayers that they would be as faithful as she was. She even sent her shoes to her daughter Anne as a sign that Anne should follow in her mother's footsteps. Wow, those were pretty big footsteps to follow. They were indeed. But all three of her children managed it when they grew up. Both of her sons becoming priests and her daughter becoming a nun. With a mum like this praying for them in heaven, I'm not surprised, Katie. Nor am I, Coco. Let's ask her to pray for us too. Dear St. Margaret Clitheroe, thank you for risking your life to protect God's priests and not letting anything frighten you from serving him. Help us to be strong in our faith like you and be grateful for the freedoms God has given us today. Please pray for all Christians who aren't allowed to practice their faith, that God will give them the strength he gave to you. Katie, if you're trying to go somewhere, I don't think you're ever going to arrive. You've been going back and forth for two whole hours. Two whole hours? I don't think it's been that long. It feels like it. Sorry. What are you doing anyway? The more you take, the more you leave behind. The riddle, I knew it. Well, what's the answer? Ah, so you were walking. Is it walking? Yep, the more you take, the more you leave behind. You're taking your foot away? Hmm, do I leave my foot behind? No. And do I take my foot? No. So what's something that you leave behind every time you take it? What if you try to take something and every time you take it, you actually leave it behind? Ah, means you're a forgetful criminal. Okay, <laughs> interesting, interesting answer, Coco. Kids, do you have any ideas? The more you take, the more you leave behind. Hmm, your shadow? Uh, I don't really take my shadow. It kind of does leave behind me, but what else goes behind me the more I take? The more I take, the more I leave behind. Ah! Your footsteps! Yeah, good job! Ah, you got it, kids? That's what you were doing! Yes! Ah, we arrived, finally! At least I didn't take two hours to guess the riddle! I think if it took that long, I would have forced you to give up and just told you the answer. Never! I will never give up! Well, good. So far, you haven't. Probably because of all the hints I give him. Yeah, well, I need to give the kids a chance so I can get it straight away. That would be showing up anyway. Oh, yeah, and you would never do that, would you? So, Katie, are we going to get a milkshake now? A milkshake? Yeah, you promised. Hmm, I did, didn't I? All right, well, how about we make one? With what? Follow me to Crafton. What's Crafton? It's like kitchen, but where you make craft. Make craft? But I thought we were making a milkshake, Katie. Come on, Coco. No, uh, Katie. Come on, don't take up another two hours. Coming. Hello, it's craft time again. Hey, craft time. And today we're going to be making a life shake. A milkshake. So do you remember how St. Margaret Clitheroe got her life just shaken up and the world is just going crazy. And so we are going to make a life shake. So we're gonna put inside all our crazy things that are happening in our life and we're gonna shake them up and then it'll be like a drink with our life in it. So what I got is a cardboard cup, a paper straw, some colored textures, a rubber band, and some colored paper pencil and scissors. So first of all, we need to make the top of our milkshake because to shake it up, we need a top. Uh, milkshake. So we're gonna use this small green piece of paper for that. So take that out. I'm gonna measure how big it is by turning it upside down. I'm gonna trace the outside. But I need it a bit bigger than that 
so I can fold it around the edge of the cup. Around that circle shape, I'm gonna draw another larger circle. Doesn't, this one doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'm gonna cut around the larger circle. Yeah! All right, there's our top done. So when we're ready, we'll put that on top like this. Fold it down like this. And we can secure it with our rubber band. And in the middle, we'll put a little hole for our straw. There's a hole for the straw to go through. So we'll put that to the side. Now we need to make the things to go inside our life shake, don't we? Okay, so that's what we've got these pieces of paper for. So on one, we're going to put our crosses. So all the things that are kind of annoying or make us sad, what we're not so happy about in our life. And then the other ones will be our joys. So the things that we're really happy about that are going on in our life and we can shake it all up in our, in our life shake. Okay, so I'm gonna make orange the crosses. So let's see, I'm going to cut out a million different crosses. I'm gonna do just a few at a time. I'm gonna fold it in half. Draw the outline of a cross and make sure it's fat enough so that you can write something on it. Okay, now we've got the outline, now we're going to cut it out. Okay, put all those scraps to the side, and here's all our crosses. Look at them all. And then you can write something on each of them. All right, Coco, what's a cross? You have wings instead of arms. You have wings instead of arms. Interesting, because you feel left out sometimes. Okay, sure. Why not? No arms. You can put whatever is upsetting you right now. Apparently this is what's upsetting Coco. And then you can pop it inside your life shake. There we go. Yeah, it's really cool. Whatever is upsetting you, you can put it in, and in here you can shake it all up and get it out of you. Okay, now we're going to do our joys because life has lots of joys as well. So for that, we're going to do a star shape. So let's use this yellow piece of paper. Fold it up so we have lots of different ones. Okay, let's draw a star shape. And we'll cut around that. Okay. There's all our stars for all our joys. There we are, lots of joys as well as crosses. Okay. All right, Coco, let's start writing on some of our joys. What are we happy about right now? You didn't make me a milkshake. That we're doing Katie and Coco. That's a good one. And you kids, kids can put that as it's your joy that you're watching Katie and Coco. I'm sure it is. Let's put Katie. And Coco, yay, that's a good joy. Let's pop that in. Remember, I'm getting you a real milkshake at the end. What about that, yeah? A real milkshake at the end of the show. Real milkshake, there we go. By God, yes, I'm sure. Everyone is joyed about that, and who knows how many joys you have. You can put them all in your life shake along with your crosses. And now we can put our top on. 
Get our rubber band, secure it on top. There we go. Let's, let's give it a name. Life. That's what's inside. One serving of a life shake. Okay, in it goes in our straw. There we go, we can give it a shake. Shake it! Shake it out of us! Hi kids, if you'd like extra instructions on how to make your very own life shake, you can find it at swpals.org. And Coco and I would love to see you making your own flavors of life shake and drinks and we would love to see it there. See ya and have fun. Have fun kids. Mm, yum, this is really good. Give myself a problem free life then. Mm, not really. It just tastes so good because it's all mixed up with all the good stuff. Let me try some. Mmm. A hint of breathlessness. Balanced with a friendly sweetness. Ooh, and a strong of the taste of laughter. <laughs> nice, but still not as good as a normal milkshake. I wonder what the kids' life shake tastes like. Hmm, I think they might get one a new flavor every day. What do you think, kids? Different flavor every day, huh? That doesn't sound so bad. Katie, can we get a real milkshake now? All right, since you've been so patient. Let's go then. Daddy out, kids. See you next time, kids. Follow, follow, St. Margaret Clitheroe. Follow me, Coco. Let's go. Okay. Come and play, play with Katie and Coco. That's the way. Get ready, let's go. Flying through the air with Coco. Telling stories with Katie. You and I together. Meeting my friends. Friends that help us every day. For fulfillment? <laughs> Discover true happiness. Stay tuned to Shalom World.